Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our October commission meeting. Um, has anyone already just decided to start decorating for the holidays so I can feel really behind? Oh, Raul, of course. Anyone with young kids, please come to my house and decorate for Halloween or fall or the holidays. Uh, well, it's really great to see everyone. Thanks for joining us in your busy schedule. Um, thank you to Misty from, for um, Zooming in from out of state. Poor Misty can never get a vacation. And even when she has a vacation, she's still working. So um, we adore you, Misty. So officially calling the meeting to order at 1231. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our August meeting. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Moraga. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Great, the minutes are approved as submitted. Are there any requests for continuance? Okay. And how about any non-agenda public comment? All right, well, we will move on to our always fun to hear friends report. And we have, welcome Ann McDonald. Hi Ann, good to see you. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, our August and September Friends Board and Advisory Council meetings were hybrid meetings. And uh, this Saturday, we will have another hybrid meeting, but in the afternoon, we're going to have an in-person planning meeting at Mission Valley Library. We will be reviewing our mission, vision, values, and bylaws, and we'll set goals for the year. We gave out two E.T. Perry Centennial Awards. Paradise Hills received $1,000 and Oak Park $1,500 to strengthen and grow their chapters. As you know, uh, Oak Park got a $20 million grant from the state, so they're very excited about um, increasing their membership and getting a greater presence and so on. We decided not to participate in the AmeriCorps VIP member program this year, but left the door open for future participation. The friends ended up sharing a booth at the San Diego Book Fair at USD on August 20th with the, the library. And we had a very good day of selling books and gathering signatures for the libraries and parks for all. Uh, we, this month, we authorized a new computer to aid in the online book sales, which are going very well. Discover Books has installed two bins outside the University Heights Branch Library. This gives us a place to store boxes of books so that they can be picked up even when we are not open, because we're only open Tuesday and Thursday mornings. These bins are for us to donate our excess books and get some income for doing so. Although the petition signing gathering is continuing, only I heard from Jerry the other day that only half of the Friends chapters have participated. We are going to work on improving that participation for the remainder of the campaign. Uh, the Friends donated $787.50 for expenses related to the new updated version of Turning the Pages, a history of the um, San Diego Public Library written by Clara Breed, former head librarian of our library. The original edition of this book was published by the Friends of the San Diego Public Library. We have caught up on unpacking the boxes that have been stored in the center of our office area. This is wonderful. <laughs> Doing so has enabled us to schedule a floor cleaning on October 28th for the entire upper floor. We are now able to accept large donations and are doing so. This week, several people and their vehicles picked up 60 boxes of books from an estate. You are invited to come to our monthly book sale on the third weekend of each month. We are open on Saturday from nine to three and Sunday from noon to three. It is an amazing sale. You will not be disappointed. We also invite you to stop by our Tuesday and our Thursday mornings from 9 to 12 to volunteer or just to see what we're doing. Respectfully submitted, Anne McDonald. Wonderful. Great report, Anne. Always wonderful, wonderful things happening. Um, our friends are really our boots on the ground, and we're so grateful. Thank you, Anne. Great mm -hmm. stuff. 
Right. Uh, moving along to the foundation report, we have the wonderful Mr. Charlie Goldberg. Charlie. Hey, everybody. Uh, I think in New Mexico. Um, I've got three quick updates. Some of this will be a little bit repetitive for those who were in the uh, advocacy meeting uh, yesterday. Um, library master plan. Um, we're moving on to the community by community outreach phase of this effort, which um, I think Patrick talked about last last month will be a combination of some open houses, um, and also some 90 minute um, active listening sessions with the community. Um, where we'll be asking what they like, what they'd like to change, um, and uh, what they'd like to add at their at their library location. So I want to thank uh, Jennifer Jenkins and library exec team for helping pull together a group of library staff members at the end of last month who um, were trained in how to lead those sessions. And so we're working on getting those scheduled um, and want to um, encourage, I know some of you have offered out, uh, reached out to us to, to help us make sure those your communities know about these sessions as they're coming. Um, we really want as broad participation as possible from both library users and non-library users. So once that uh, that schedule is is published, we'll be reaching out to you and um, asking your help to make sure we get as much and as broad as participation as possible in that phase. Um, advocacy, I think we, oh, I'm not sure if we talked about it at the last meeting about um, the city council had changed their schedule for when um, budget priority memos are due. So the first one was due the September 30th. Um, thank you to the library staff and to Wendy and Anne for helping us put together a um, priority memo request to each council district that's centered around materials, um, around maintenance budget, around increasing the city match again this year, and also um, adding um, full-time new service librarians at every location. Um, we've delivered that. We've heard from several council offices that they've received it and are considering it or had considered it. Um, they had to submit their uh, priority memos to the IBA on the 30th. And I think a week from tomorrow, we will hear from the IBA on what that report looks like. So we'll know what our work is um, on the advocacy front through the, through the end of the fall. And then the last thing I have to mention is we are um, scheduling candidate forums with uh, the two of the candidates in, in D6, uh, Ken Lee and Tommy Howe. Um, we're hoping to get those scheduled the week of October 17th. Uh, thank you again to, to uh, Wendy and Ann for agreeing to participate as part of Libraries Transform SD Coalition um, to ask those candidates questions um, and, and participate in those forums. If you have questions that you would like to um, make sure that those candidates are um, asked uh, about about their library perspective and are not able to attend those, please make sure to forward to Patrick or me and we'll um, ensure that they are uh, part of part of the presentation. That's all I've got. Awesome. Great work, Charlie. Thank you to you and the foundation. Lots and lots and lots going on. And I must say I'm excited every time I see a signature gatherer. I saw the one at Vaughn's in Rancho Bernardo and I was telling her how excited I am and I'm on the commission and she's like, that's great. Are you going to sign? It's all going to sign, but thank you for being here. Um, before we, um, thank you, Charlie. Um, before we move forward um, to the consent agenda, I just wanted to just take a moment to um, acknowledge our library staff, um, Misty and team. Um, as many of us um, heard and we were very saddened to hear about the tragic death at Central last week and of course our condolences uh, to that person and their family and loved ones. Um, but really, I, I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge our staff and also the first responders that were on scene. I mean, when you think you sign up for a job as maybe a first responder, um, you know, you're trained in trauma work and, and maybe you're used to it. But I think about, you know, if I were a library staff member and I'm signing up to go to work today to you know, promote literacy and things like that, and just recognizing that trauma. Um, so just acknowledging all of our, our wonderful staff and thank you, Misty and team. I know you guys were on it quickly in terms of how do we support our staff and how do we get EAP and all of those things involved when something like this happens. So just want to acknowledge that, um, send on behalf of the commission, all of our very good wishes. It's not something that just goes away overnight. Um, we know that mental health challenges don't just exist in the library, they exist in our world. Um, so 
just thank you. Thank you for um, all that you do. It does not go unnoticed. And thank you for your nice comments in the chat. Okay, uh, moving forward with the consent agenda, we have a report on library construction projects. All right, there we go. I had to unmute myself. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much. It has been so exciting on the project side. So busy. Um, thankfully, we've been uh, the recipient of um, some very nice grant funding. Um, and to make it more exciting, we are full steam ahead on the Pacific Highlands Ranch Branch Library construction. I'll start with that. Um, it, the, the construction is ongoing. They're moving dirt. It's getting uh, dusty. You know, we have biweekly meetings, um, which I am a part of. Man, we go down to the nitty gritty on the details. I really appreciate that. ENCP staff has been has been great as well. You know, there's input from from different teams across the city, development services, um, and we're checking things off the list. Um, so we, we meet across the street from the rec center, it makes it easy to just take a quick look at the site. Um, but it's, it's, it's going well. Tomorrow we have a meeting with the artwork, um, with, excuse me, with the artists for the proposed artwork. Um, so we're gonna be looking at some of the samples. There were some concerns about uh, ADA and you know, making sure that it was something that was uh, sustainable, manageable, um, and, and not very cost, um, uh, costly for the city moving forward. So, you know, that artwork will, is, is going to go in that courtyard on the floor, on the walls. Um, it's it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great theme, just uh, uh, dotting I's and crossing T's. Um, next, the Scripps Ranch uh, Miramar Ranch Library, excuse me, Scripps Miramar Ranch Library, we have the um, parking lot expansion going on. Um, and, you know, it kind of seems like it's taking a long time, but some of these permitting things take a while. We've got the design consultant on board and they are working tirelessly. They're addressing a lot of the concerns that were brought up by stormwater, um, the ADA component, the traffic, um, you know, egress, ingress, and there's, there's new electrical um, that, that has to be put up. So we've gotten comments from the transportation uh, team and we are moving forward with the contract advertisement as was started. Um, super exciting on Oak Park. Um, the architectural engineering uh, planning group of engineering and capital projects um, is working on getting the environmental permitting. So they've, uh, I just got out of a meeting with them, um, good news. So uh, because some of that park land um, still needs to have uh, protected areas, uh, we, it looks like we're good on all the CEQA stuff, which is the California Environmental Quality Act, and the way that the building is, is, is being um, designed, or, or not designed yet, but, but the way that's being proposed to be positioned, it, it looks like everything's uh, A-OK -okay on, on that end. So the engineering folks, um, I mean, this project is moving so fast. We, we've, we've got the grant money that, that has a clock on it. So um, the, the engineering team has uh, put out an RFQ. Um, that is the request for qualifications. It's, it's uh, going to be um, on, on October 11th, there is a planning group meeting, which ENCP is going to introduce formally introduce this item to the community and is gonna kick off the community input process. Um, so we're super excited about that. We're, they're, they're gonna talk about the delivery method, um, which is a design build. They're gonna talk about um, the, the, the timeline, uh, the, the cost, and um, it's, it's, it's moving forward. Um, super excited about that, that piece. Old Logan, um, Old Logan, it's, it's, it's the uh, historic uh, Old Branch Library. Um, there's still work happening on that. We have, we, we have a grant there for $2.4 million. Uh, there's been uh, community meetings already um, that, are, that, are, that were put on by um, the mayor's office and, and um, the, the, the community is, they provided input uh, via survey to see uh, what they would like that facility to be once it's restored. Um, so future and ongoing outreach um, is, is going on there. Um, and then Ocean Beach. 
uh, in, in May 2022, um, the project team there presented the OB planning board with, with those three design concepts. And so one was picked um, and the preferred option was brought forward to the community. Um, and now uh, they're moving forward with coastal development permits um, and the completion of the bridging documents to, to advance with construction. So grant money there as well. We're waiting on an, on an additional $4 million that we heard has been earmarked, but we need to see it so we can believe it. Um, but this project is, is full steam ahead as well. Um, so we anticipate that the award and the design build contract um, would happen in the summer of 2024. Um, but again, waiting on that additional money so we can, so we can award that. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Congratulations on all of the grant money and really exciting. I don't know how you and your team manage all of the 40 billion details and permitting, uh, which is way above my pay grade, um, but thank you for all of that. It's, I mean, exciting, exciting, exciting. What a great report. Thank you for those updates. All right, I think we're moving on to Misty, yeah? Misty from Mobile. Mobile, Mobile, however you pronounce it. I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. Misty, mobile, 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 okay. mobile. mobile. With like mobile. three, you know, gotta Five. drag out the eel. Um, mobile. So, thank you, Misty. yeah, thank you so much um, for patience with me being in, in Alabama and uh, all things that happen to my hair when I'm here. So, um, <laughs> I uh, just a few little updates. Um, thank you so much, Wendy, for recognizing um, the staff. The incident um, that happened on the 26th um, was, was very unexpected. Um, unfortunately, I think in, a, as I mentioned, um, probably unavoidable um, because it was a very determined um, person. Um, but it is, really, really traumatizing for staff, um, particularly after what they went through three years ago um, and, and, and what they go through on a daily basis. I mean, it's, it's really difficult. I don't have to tell you all that. You look at the security report, um, even though for a system of our size, uh, when you think about percentage of visitors that we have and the percentage of visits, it's not, it doesn't seem significant, but everyone is significant, right? Everyone is difficult to deal with. And this one was particularly um, difficult. We've done a couple of things. We have a, a guard now stationed um, all the time on the ninth floor. So um, that ninth floor is not going to be, the guards have been really good about patrolling. Um, but we have one that is stationed all the time now um, on the ninth floor. We are also looking at, we've had EAP come in. I will say the day of um, crisis, the crisis intervention team responded immediately. Um, they are talking to staff that were directly impacted. And then we've had EAP came in the next day, um, did group and individual counseling sessions for staff and we're continuing to stay engaged with them and working with HR to have group sessions um, and continue on not just for this incident but for you know a lot of the things that that our staff deal with um, on a daily basis so um, I appreciate you recognizing them for that um, a little bit of the hiring update. So we are going to be doing the librarian process, librarian one, two process uh, fairly quickly. And um, that is crucial to being able to get Ocean Beach opened. That's the only one that we lack being open Monday through Saturday is Ocean Beach, um, but they are down on um, a youth services librarian. So we need to get that position hired before we can get them reopened on Saturdays. And then we're gonna start adding um, Sundays, we've been working with our, um, our uh, represented employee organization, MEA, on the scheduling for Sundays. Uh, we've done a few surveys with staff um, to get their feed feedback. We're trying to really uh, think about a balance, a work-life balance, um, try to be able to be as flexible as we can. Um, within the constraints, I mean, we do have a collective bargaining um, uh, environment, so 
that means that staff have to kind of work with the same hours, but we are trying to uh, create as much flexibility as we can, um, uh, particularly, you know, for weekends and uh, nights. And so we'll stay tuned. We aren't there yet, but again, we're not ready to open on Sundays. So, um, but we're, we're getting there. So very shortly, it is probably going to be a schedule overhaul. Um, which is going to be kind of a huge work pill, but I feel like it's going to be worth it um, to be able to create something that the staff um, really have buy-in um, and uh, voted on, and you know it's going to it's going to be fair for the majority of staff. Um, a couple of uh, new positions, as you know, we hired Eddie Fertis as program manager for um, Youth Family and Equity Services. Uh, and so uh, to replace her position as supervising librarian for youth and family um, services, Emily Derry took her position. Emily was the uh, youth and family engagement um, librarian. And so she has moved up. She's, uh, she's done a phenomenal job. She did um, an out of class assignment when uh, um, Addie was out uh, last year and just did a phenomenal job. So she's been able to step into that role. Um, also, Jennifer Jenkins, when she moved up to the deputy director position, her supervising librarian over area four was vacant, and we have hired Moni Tong to take her position. Moni was the sciences um, librarian and was instrumental in um, securing the grant for uh, the Rebellious Misbreed um, grant that we had in that program. And so Moni's great and has uh, worked at Central um, I think since the beginning of her career, she's always worked at Central, and so she has stepped again right into um, that role. So we're really lucky. And then we did lose one of our supervising librarians, Kelly Keppo, was promoted um, into the Human Resources um, Office. She is going to be over um, volunteers in uh, the youth internships. And so we have um, replaced her with Kelly Verheiden. Kelly was most recently at Kensington. Uh, branch library. She has served as the uh, librarian three over uh, youth services here at here at, or not here. I'm not at Central, but at the Central Library, and uh, was recently promoted to the librarian four at North University um, for about two weeks before we took her as supervising librarian. So, <laughs> so uh, those are some um, staffing changes. But we have some manager positions that are open, so we're trying to get those filled um, as quickly as possible. What else do I have? Oh, another uh, really exciting thing staff-wise is our very own Jackie Angel, who is in our um, administration, was named one of the city's employees of the year. So she was the employee of the year for our library department um, last year, and she was named a city employee of the year. Jackie served with me down at Operation Shelter to Home for about 10 months as well. So she was kind of my right hand um, down there and, and handled all of the staffing schedules and everything. And she's just, um, anybody that you talk to, she is really phenomenal. So, that's to her. Um, Raul mentioned some of the funding that we've gotten, but we did finally receive the $500,000 um, federal grant for the Linda Vista for um, improving the Linda Vista patio. We also received um, a million dollar grant. This was made uh, possible through Sarah Jacobs. Office Congresswoman Jacob and a uh, million dollars for full site for improvements um, to the surrounding area of the theater and the performance annex. And then we got another $3.3 million in a state grant um, for the city heights. And so that is going to be a 50% match from the city. So that gives us about 6 million total to do some uh, much needed improvements to the Black Box Theater and the annex there at City Heights. And so we're super excited about that. Um, we have a program that we're working on with um, Council District 1. Uh, La Cava's office secured $100,000 in, in this year's budget for a program called Free For Me. And that is free menstrual products for women, uh, well, for anyone, uh, free menstrual products to put in restrooms in rec centers and um, libraries. And we are hoping to get them in as many libraries as we can. Um, we have uh, the Free For Me is um, working with the county to make this available. And so we're um, working on implementing that, but that's gonna make a huge difference um, for, uh, for people um, who need that. So, and 
And you may have seen recently in the news, there's been a lot of um, protests and uh, kind of negative um, things happening around uh, books and censorship in many libraries. Um, there have been libraries, I mean, we're very fortunate here that we do not get um, many um, requests. We don't get many challenges for books. Um, and when we do, you know, we follow, we have a, a policy that we follow um, and we have never, we've only once ever really taken a book out. And it wasn't because of censorship, it was because um, once somebody challenged it, we found out that nobody checked it out in like the last five years. <laughs> So it was probably just uh, not being used. And then, um, but there's been a um, more than the American Library Association has ever seen um, in its history. And a lot of these, the majority of them are LGBTQ focused. Um, there are a lot also that deal with critical race theory. Um, and many, many states, and there's one library that was completely defunded because um, their librarians did not remove books that had been challenged. And so their community voted not to fund, not to continue to fund their library. Um, so it's a kind of scary um, time. It's uh, really disheartening. Um, but what I will say that was encouraging is that we got a lot of media attention around Fan books um, here. We got to talk to a lot of media outlets. There was a lot of interest in the band books programming that we did. Um, our team did a phenomenal job. They did the readathon, they did a band book bingo, they did virtual events, in person events, uh, movie night. It was, um, it really went all out. But this is a time that. Um, you know, I really feel like we need to speak up and make sure um, that people understand what a dangerous thing censorship is, what a slippery slope um, this is, and that we are going to con continue to advocate um, to make sure that everyone has access um, to information. So, and that's part of what we're doing with our health information, um, you know, project that, that I have asked for um, has been working on with the circuit libraries um, and just continuing to uh, to push that message um, to everyone. And then the last thing I'll say is that you may um, have read this in the news, but we are getting, the city is getting a new chief operating officer. Eric Dargan is coming from Houston, the city of Houston, where he serves as the executive director for, uh, or the director for public works there. He's going to be coming in, from what I understand, on morning sometime in November, um, but we have a, a meeting set up with him in December to brief him on um, the library department. So um, Jay uh, Goldstone will be staying on for a little while working on some special projects. Um, he's, he's so great. Um, we're going to miss him, but really looking forward to, to having um, Eric Dargan on board. So that is all that I have, unless anybody has any questions. Great report, Misty. Loved all the, the news coverage um, on banned books and love what the library is doing and backflips. I'm just so thrilled about all of the grant money. I mean, you guys are just rolling out half a million. Of a couple, that is really, really huge, huge, huge. And then when you get the money to implement, it's a whole nother thing. But um, congratulations again, just incredible, incredible efforts happening in our libraries. Um, Thank you. Thank you for that, Misty. And we now have some really fabulous guest presentations. So would you like to do the introductions? Thank you for joining us, uh, Sarah and Ben Maureen. But go ahead, Misty, I'll let you do the official okay. intros. Yeah, so um, first that we have, um, as you remember a few years ago, we um, kind of called our government document um, we weeded a lot of the ones that were not getting used. And part of that gave us an opportunity to really be able to see what we had. Um, Sarah Hindi Jackson um, works here at the Central, or works at the Central Library. She works in the sciences and she is our government um, 
our government documents librarian. She kind of took on that role and she really ran with it. And she's done some really exciting things. She has a niche for finding those little hidden treasures um, and to make government documents fun, which a lot of people don't think they can be. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah to let you know how she is accomplishing that. Thank you, Misty. Okay, I'm gonna get my presentation going here. Sarah, do you know you're still muted? Yeah. Mm. I heard you that time. Wait, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so what, if I share my screen, is it gonna stop? <laughs> oh no. Can you still hear me? Yes. I can still hear you. Okay, 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 cool. Um, well, then let me start over. Um, what I had said was uh, that oh, I had wait, literally but jumped. Now we can't see your screen. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. How about if I leave it like this? Can you see it like this? <laughs> we cannot see, we cannot see it. We were we were able to see, see it anything? earlier. Yeah. You can't see anything. <laughs> no, dang. Okay. Um maybe try to stop share and then share again. Okay. Let's see. Share. Thank you guys for your patience. I really appreciate it. Share. We can see it now. We can see it, but we can't hear you. I think uh, you just have to unmute. I wonder if somebody else can share the presentation while Sarah speaks. That would be really cool. Um, Does Trisha have it? No, but I will copy it into the chat. You want to just okay. email it to me or to Addie? Okay. That no, one of us can do it. You put it in the chat. So can you share it, Jennifer, from the chat and then Sarah can talk. I'm trying right now, I'm trying to open the presentation. Okay, it's not letting me do anything because I don't have a Canva. Oh. Hmm. Okay, how can we do this? I can try uh, because I do have Canva. Let's see. Thanks, Maureen. Oh, 
Okay. Yay. Thank you, Maureen. Okay. Um, so uh, I spent the last year um, acclimating to this new job as the Federal Depository Library Program Coordinator or Government Documents Librarian. Um, by exploring the collection. Um, I dived into the card catalogs, explored the public stacks, reconnoitered the storage rooms, um, and I spent that time documenting and researching the weird and wonderful and head scratching things that I encountered. Um, and I, I am, as I hope this meme <laughs> suggests, really excited to share some of those strange and very cool discoveries with you today. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Okay. Oops. Okay. Um, I can't cover everything I want to um, about government documents in five to 10 minutes. Um, so here are the things that I'm not going to discuss today. Um, our extensive participation in the FDLP. Um, we <laughs> have been engaged since 1895. And while we're not currently receiving new documents, we are active participants. Um, we currently hold an estimated 1.4 million tangible items in the collection. Um, and as of 2020, we had the GPO come out and identify um, a number of high risk and valuable titles um, in our current holdings. Um, so those are the things I'm, I'm not gonna discuss. <laughs> um, next slide, please. Um, instead, I wanna focus on the documents themselves. And I wanted to do that by starting with the least inspiring quote I could find about government documents. This is the standard definition as I, as defined in the US code. Um, it says government documents, uh, government publications, excuse me, uh, means informational matter, which is published as an individual document at government expense or is required by law. And I wanted to start with this definition because I think it encapsulates the experience that I and many of the patrons have um, when engaging with the government documents. Uh, it sounds scary, it's intimidating and it's unaccessible, uh, but I'm hoping to show you that that's not the case. All right, next slide, please. Um, a more approachable and useful definition of government documents comes from um, the very first government documents librarian in the United States. Her name is Adelaide Haas. Um, she originated at LA Public Library and went on to the New York Public Library. And she defined government documents or the study of government documents as the study of the mechanism of the modern government. Um, next slide, please. So with that in mind, um, I started diving into the collection, searching for government documents that were relevant to personal interests, current world events and programming that was happening at San Diego Public. Um, my arrival in sciences coincided with the opening of the Rebellious Misbreed Project, um, and I wanted to see what kind of documents uh, were related to the Japanese incarceration that we had in our collection. Um, this first one I want to note is titled WRA, A Story of Human Conservation, um, and this is a history of the evacuation, and that's their, their term, um, from the perspective of the War Re Relocation Authority, um, discussing the practical aspects of the WRA effort, including efforts to help the evacuees, so they claim. Um, next slide, please. Um, this second item is titled the guidebook, oh, oh, oh. the guidebook for the residents of relocation centers. Um, it's a handbook for the people incarcerated at detention sites across the US. This is published by the GPO for these folks. Um, and the last paragraph in the manual is really striking and I just wanna read a small portion of it. It's, it's kind of hard to see, um, but it says, evacuees of Japanese ancestry are free at all times to request repatriation in case um, of alien or expatriation in case of American citizens to the empire of Japan. And it goes on to articulate um, falsely, of course, that um, folks in detention centers had all these rights. Um, but this manual is interesting because it lays down what life was like um, at the detention centers. Um, and for me, it really illustrates Adelaide Haas's point about how government documents reveal the mechanisms and the attitude of the state towards its people. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the next items I'm gonna show you, um, I encountered by chance. So um, 
as we determined in that 2020 um, assessment of our collection, it's estimated that 25 to 50% of the GovDocs are cataloged. Um, so a lot of what I find, I just um, spend some time in the back rooms and um, poke around and see what see what's there. And so um, this one is really special. It's titled Yank Talk. Um, it's a magazine published for soldiers living and working abroad during World War I. Um, it's published post-war in 1918, and it employs humor to address these issues of transitioning back to civilian life. Um, and I found it remarkable because of the Red Cross advertisement that's in the back. Um, it's interesting because it adv advocates for uh, soldiers' mental health, um, which didn't really seem to be a, a major component of discourse um, concerning reentry at, at this point in history. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> um, I came to learn that military documents make frequent use of illustrations, and many of them have humorous undertones, such as this one. It's titled Shark Sense. Um, it's an illustrated technical manual designed to teach aviators uh, how to deal with sharks if their planes crash into the ocean. Um, it's one of a series of these types of things. Um, it is one of the stranger documents I encountered. Um, note the gang-like shark illustration. Um, I find that one fascinating. Um, but there are some serious um, historical events that catalyzed the publication of this text. Um, there were some terrible shark attacks on the eastern seaboard, which would, of course, later go on to inspire Jaws. Um, and the USS Indianapolis disaster um, really stoked fear of sharks um, in the public eye. And so the government responded with things like this, um, humorous, of course, to overcome that, um, that fear. Um, and one last thing to note about um, shark sense, uh, the image on the bottom right is demonstrating um, the deployment of shark repellent, which um, as I was researching this document, I learned that the uh, developer, the inventor of Shark repellent is actually Miss Julia Child, the chef. Um, she was employed for the she was employed at the OSS um, in the Navy uh, prior to becoming a chef. Um, and I, I I seriously love that image. <laughs> um, next slide, please. Okay, um, this pamphlet uh, is published by the Department of Interior, and it's designed to be used at Native American Indian boarding schools across the U.S. Um, in early, well, mid 19th century to mid 20, 20th century. Um, and as you might expect, uh, this manual is um, uh, prescriptive and Eurocentric. Um, but what I thought was really interesting about it is um, at the end of the, the document, there's a compendium of Native American um, Native Indian recipes, which are compiled from students and their families um, from numerous tribes across the United States. Um, this was published during the time when General Pratt's ideology to kill the Indian and save the man permeated government policy. Um, but I think this text stands um, in its tangible form as evidence of um, Native Indian families exercising their agency, resisting government oppression in schools, and finding ways to internalize that Native Indian information, the recipes um, that were being threatened by eradication. Next slide. Okay, and this is my last, uh, this is my, my current passion project. Um, I'm going to let my TikTok persona, Sarah the Librarian, explain this one. Um, if you could press start. I just found something unexpected in a Department of Interior book and I wanna show you because it's really cute. I'm looking at the title page of illustrations to the geological report of Wisconsin, Iowa, and Minnesota. Um, down here, it says this edition published for the General Land Office, 1852. And you can kind of see what it is that um, I wanted to show you. It looks like at some point somebody used this for a pressed flower um, and it stained the pages. And I don't know if we'll ever know when it was done, but I thought it was really cute. All right, and if we go to the next page, next slide. 
Um, so what's next? So um, after I recorded that TikTok video, um, I got really excited and showed Jennifer Jenkins in the hallway. Um, I had just discovered um, flipping through to the end of the book that there are in fact um, dry flower specimen present in this text. Um, and because I posted this video on TikTok, um, the TikTok algorithm is currently pushing videos about herbariums, dried flowers, and um, other botanical interest um, videos into my feed. Um, and it's hard to see here, but um, I recently connected on TikTok with the New York Botanical Gardens, um, their, their librarian there, um, to ask for advice on how to research those flowers um, that I found in the end of this book. Um, to see what we can find, to see what um, we can date it or decide who put it there or what its significance is. Um, and so with that, we'll go to the last slide. And I just wanna thank you um, with my favorite, favorite GovDoc image from a Scruff McGruff comic book, um, my happy little balloon guy. So anyways, thank you guys so much. Um, feel free to reach out with questions. What a great, presentation. I can see where you would very easily fall down the rabbit hole in finding really cool things. Thank you for that, Sarah. Um, I also just wanted to give a shout out, another shout out. Um, I was at, I had the pleasure of being at city council last week, two weeks ago. I, I was there to get sworn in on the women's commission, but I saw Misty there and she, I said, what are you here for? She said, what are you here for? And it was the day that uh, city council did the formal apology uh, to Japanese Americans. So back to when the Japanese Americans were interned and city council had based on incorrect and false information agreed that, you know, people of Japanese American descent were all potentially spies and should pack up their belongings in a week and leave. And, you know, it was through the the partnership of the library where it was noted that there was this ordinance passed in city council agreeing with what was happening in bigger government saying, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea to send everyone away of uh, Japanese American descent. Um, so I just thought it was cool. Again, when we find these little nuggets in history, um, sharing them, I mean, what a, what a great, fascinating presentation, Sarah. Um, very, very clever. And I'm glad we were able to see all those fun documents. Um, and I just made a note about Julia Childs because I love her and I did not know that. And that is a fun fact that I hope to win some Friday night game with. Um, but excellent. Any questions for Sarah? That is just fascinating to me. <laughs> Thank you for making that accessible to all of us. Because, um, you know, it's real easy to think, oh, it's just a bunch of old paper sitting somewhere, right? But Look at these wonderful rich nuggets that reflect upon what was happening in our society back then. Um, so, yeah, it's fascinating. And, you know, thank you. we're kind of at an interesting pivot point where we're going digital and we've got these material objects that have so much cool history. So I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't want to, uh, that was great, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to one plug of Sarah's TikTok if you want to learn more about our government documents collection. We are not allowed as a city entity at the moment to have our own organizational TikTok, but Sarah uh, is deep in the mix of book talk and, and the culture of TikTok and posts so many cool things and fun videos. Um, so definitely check that out. And I just also wanted to shout her out and let you know, she played a big role in the Rebellious Miss Breed and actually like co-wrote the draft of the resolution that we submitted for consideration that they eventually used for the formal apology. So Sarah is a key player in a lot of things that we do. Thank you, Sarah. And talking to the people that were in the audience and many in the Japanese American community, I attended the uh, JACL, Japanese American Citizen League Gala just a couple days later and folks were still talking about it. I, I called my parents uh, in the Bay Area who were both interned in camp as young children. It's, it's a really, really, really big deal. Um, for the APIA Japanese American community. So once again, our library totally going above and beyond all of the time in really just amazing ways. So thank you for that. Well, this is just gonna keep on going on high yeah. up. I just, I just love it. Um, Misty, thank you for bringing Sarah and Jennifer, thank you for having Sarah present. And we have another fabulous presentation. Misty, do you wanna do the intro? Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Um, thank you, Wendy, for uh, it had jotted down to to mention the 
uh, apology as well, um, but also to give you Sarah, um, Jennifer herself, uh, Mark Cherry, Moni Tong, and Steve Ramon um, all played an instrumental part in and actually finding that it was still a resolution on the books was the biggest thing and then bringing it to Council Member Elo Rivera's office who took it the next step right and said not only are we going to resend this but we're also going to do a formal apology um and so a uh, very proud moment um for a library director <laughs> so uh just just goes to show you how awesome the staff is um the next uh is um the next project is are the kindness rock garden um at the rancho penasquitos libraries and maureen at the rancho penasquitos library um and Maureen Meadows, who's the Youth Services Librarian, is going to present on that. But um, this is really cool, and as you all know, we could we could definitely use a little bit more kindness um, in our lives. So, Maureen, take it away. Hello, everyone. Um, I am actually filling in for my branch manager, who decided to take a vacation, which is badly needed for her. So, I'm very excited to do this. So, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen and. Okay, so my name is Maureen. I'm the Youth Services Librarian here at the Rancho Penasquitos Branch Library, and I've been here for uh, going on my second year, so I'm very excited. I love being here, and I am honored and delighted to present the information uh, about our Kindness Rock Garden that we are starting. It's very exciting. So it started with Beth, who is on the board of our Friends of the Rancho Penasquitos Branch Library, uh, her mother passed away uh, recently, and she was searching for a way to honor her mother that would both, you know, be meaningful for her family as well as the community that she lives in. And so she proposed uh, to uh, us that we uh, start a kindness rock garden, and it's just a wonderful idea. Um, we obviously embrace the idea because it, it supports our goal of connecting with our community and facilitating opportunities for our community to interact and connect with each other. And it really has done that in um, an amazing way. So Beth was inspired by Dave's Rock Garden in Encinitas and if you haven't been, it's a wonderful, magical place to go. I had never been, and I recently went, and I'm just blown away. And the possibilities that we could have, oh, I'm just excited. And there is actually a Kindness Rocks project that's nationwide. I, um, and the it's the message is that one message at the right moment can change someone's life. And the purpose of the project is simple. It's to cultivate connections within communities and lift others up uh, with simple acts of kindness. And that is what we strive to do at the library, right? So um, yeah, <laughs> it's really neat. So our near term goal is to fill the planters of our trees that are in front of the library with kindness rocks. And we are well on our way there because we have four tree planters and we're almost filled our fourth tree planter. So it's really neat. Um, and this is all to be done uh, hopefully prior to our uh, 30th anniversary celebration on October 15th. Our long-term goal is to actually uh, transform the area on the south side of the building um, and change the landscaping and create a Kindness Rocks garden similar to Dave's Rock Garden in Encinitas. And you can see that this would be a lovely area for that. And uh, we're very excited by the opportunity to do this. So to support this, we have uh, developed a plan and we have uh, secured resources from our friends at the library who uh, support us in this endeavor. And we have scheduled um, three rock painting parties for our community as part of our three 30th anniversary uh, celebration activities. And so we've hosted two so far. And as you can see, here's um, the pictures from one of them. Um, it's fun for all ages. We've had everyone come out, families, as you can see. Um, and it's 
been tremendously uh, supported by the community. Well, we've put out surveys, they love it. They want more activities just like this. And so it's actually gonna be a monthly activity that we're gonna do every every month at, on a certain Saturday um, and have everyone from the community come out and paint rocks. Um, the last rock painting party we held was uh, September 24th and we had over 302 rocks painted and we had about 60 anywhere from 60 to 90 community members show up so it's been truly amazing i i had girls come in and gather like five rocks that that was their goal they're going to paint five rocks at a time it was fun and so you are welcome to join us on our next rock painting party um which is happening saturday this saturday october 8th at 10 30 to noon all the supplies are to be provided and it'll be hosted by Beth, the volunteer and uh, board member. And we also are having local Girl Scout troop come in and help assist us with this rock painting party because they wanted to be a part of the community and um, meet one of their community go um, I think it's one of their badges. So I wanted to point out some of our special rocks that uh, Beth has made. Um, the center one is the masterpiece. It's uh, celebrating our 30th anniversary here at PQ Library. And uh, she uh, took, we have a image from the anniversary that we've been using and all of our marketing materials. And so she um, adhered it to the rock and painted and added um, a clear coat over it. And then she created the library foundation rock with your logo. I think it's a, I think it's a sticker, but she added some more adhesive. So it really um, sticks to the rock and she painted it with the, the colors. It's beautiful. My personal favorite is the mummy with the googly eyes. Um, there's also a Frankenstein one. So, but she's just, a, she is an amazing uh, craftsperson. So um, she does these things that are so, so much fun. Um, so uh, on October 15th, at 10 30 we are celebrating 30 years here at the pq library and we can't wait we've had the community um throughout the month um create all our decorations they've been making paper flowers and papel picado and you know writing you know anniversary messages for us and all kinds of fun things so we are so excited to have a party here um, Misty will be here. Patrick will be here uh, joining us. We'll have uh, Odie the Library Coyote to meet with his younger fans. And we're so excited about that. And there will be cake. <laughs> so everybody loves cake, right? I hope. So we hope to see you here as well. And I'm just going to leave you with some of the things. Um, we've had uh, the kids make felt cupcakes in honor of it and decorate rocks. And we're going to be offering a keychain craft on the 30th anniversary. So um, thank you so much for having me. And I hope you uh, are able to join us on October 15th. It should be a very, very special day. Awesome. Thank you for that really fun and whimsical presentation, Maureen. I don't know if you've ever tried painting rocks. My rocks certainly don't look like that. <laughs> uh, but happy 30 years. What a great way to celebrate. And you know, it's it's so simple how something like painting a rock can just create so much joy for the person doing it and for the person that may be the recipient of it, whether it's the library or neighbor. I know one of my my youngest, we painted, or she, I not we, she will tell me she painted little happiness rocks and we dropped them in people's um, yards around. And so like, do they still leave them there? Did they see who's you know littering our yard? But um that's just great. I love it. Um, and thank you for the invitation. So folks are able to join on the 15th at 1030 and eat cake and paint a rock. Really, really, really fun. Thank you, Maureen. What a what a wonderful and positive presentation. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. And that boy, the, the one with the picture of the library and then the foundation. I mean, again, we've got some very talented people. <laughs> um, great. Any questions for Maureen or um, for Misty? All right. Thank you so much. Is there any commissioner comment? Call for commissioner comment. Is that any other business? 
All right. Well, uh, before we adjourn, a uh, friendly reminder, our next meeting is November 2nd over Zoom. Um, thank you all for your support of the library. Um, also, just a quick shout out to Ms. Addie Vertas on her recent big news and nuptials. Um, you're just such an amazing person for the library and in the community. Um, congratulations on that. And um, Wendy. Yes, Misty. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, I got a direct message from Marshall. He had to jump off at 130 to go to another meeting, but yep. he uh, had planned on bringing a public safety letter to you all um, and to mention it at this meeting so that we could put it on the agenda um, for next meeting. So unfortunately, Marshall is um, not going to be continuing. He is going to be resigning his position if he's a little overcommitted. Um, so November will be his last meeting, but he does want to bring that before he um, resigns. So we'll get it on the agenda. Good. It will be November. Okay. I, I, I remember he said maybe this meeting, but he had to jump. So um, stay tuned for the November 2nd meeting and our last meeting with our dear Marshall, um, who's done a great job as a commissioner. Okay, thank you for that, Misty. Anything else? All right, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for all of your efforts. Um, have a great day and we will see you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.